1903, and the person we're interviewing is Harry T. Russell, and Harry Russell lives on Harveysburg Road in Waynesville, Ohio. Thank you, Harry, for coming and being a part of this. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about how you ended up in World War II? I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Did you uh, join or were you drafted? I enlisted. You enlisted? Yeah. Okay. And you enlisted in what branch of the service? Field artillery. Okay. The U.S. Army. In the Army. All right. And uh, where did you do your basic training? Fort Sill. In where? Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. How? And I was in a hell of an outfit. It was a mule pack artillery. Oh. And we, we didn't ride the mules. We walked with them. Mm -hmm. See, six mules carried a pack howitzer, like the barrel was this long, uh -huh. you know, and then one of them carried two wheels and all that stuff. Uh -huh. Trail. Okay. 75 millimeter howitzer. Why did they train you that way? <laughs> I don't know. Because I said I wanted to be in the field artillery. Okay. Because of my size and everything, about all the guys in there was about six foot. Okay. In this, in this pack house, or because mm -hmm. they had to put the gun tube and the barrels and stuff up on the mules. Mm -hmm. They had to pack on them, so you, you okay. know, to hold them. Uh, I'm curious uh, if you would have gone overseas. Did they transport animals over there? Yeah, but uh, I, I didn't go with that. That When I got overseas, I was in a regular field artillery outfit, 155. Okay, tell me about that, what that okay. is and everything. Well, shell that flies through the air is about from here to here and about this big around. It's good size. Mm -hmm. Weighs 95 pounds. That's a projectile that goes through the air. And they make a lot of noise, you know, yeah. <laughs> when they go off. Okay. They got quite a range. I, I couldn't tell you how far they could shoot. But they... So exactly what did you do when you went overseas? And what part of the, what country were you in? Uh, let's see, I forget where I went first. <laughs> New Cal, yeah, New Caledonia. That was an island. Okay. And then I went from there. I was there for a while, and uh, let's see, we had. Uh, what my notes stay? Well, we guarded a, a, a naval ammunition dump there on New Caledonia. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But well, we had a colonel that was yellow, and he'd take any job that he could get so that he wouldn't go to combat. <laughs> oh, okay. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's that's my idea, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how long were you there guarding the? Uh... Oh, that's a good question. It might have been. Uh, Anywhere from three to six months, I suppose. Okay, and then we had guard duty night and day, you know. Mm -hmm. And also at this naval ammunition dump, they had uh, they had bombs there beside you know all kind of stuff they had, and uh, they had a guy. I think he had a tractor and, and a little trailer with it. And he had these bombs in it, and somebody must have fused one of them, because it blew him and and the wagon and the whole bit over the hill, mm. killed him, and uh, you know, mm. just probably sabotage. Probably. <laughs> now I personally don't really comprehend what this is. They're they're used ammunition or just the naval ammunition dump. Okay. And they had, they had uh, 
I like those 16 inch battleship shells probably weigh 2,700 pounds. Of course, you couldn't lift them, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that way. Yeah. But they had all kinds of stuff. The Marines had ammo there and everything. Okay. And that's what we were guarding. I was in a shack up on stilts so all that right. we could look around, you know. Okay. And see all those wonderful mosquitoes they had. Oh, I bet. They Some had area. Plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So after your two or three months there, where did you go? Well, let's see. From New Cal, we went. Uh, we got on a ship and went up past Guadalcanal to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Stopped at New Guinea, and uh, we got a treat at New Guinea. Uh, we, when the uh, ship stopped there at New Guinea. I, I and some other guys got off, and we picked up car, uh, Baby Ruth candy bars, <laughs> which was a real treat. Uh, it would be. We each, each of us got five of them, but I'm not done yet. Okay. Okay. I'd eaten four of them, and I was on the fifth one, and somebody said, these damn candy bars have got worms in them. And I looked down there, and there was one just where I'd bit. <laughs> so I threw it overboard. <laughs> that same ship had them white, white worms about that long, the same like on them candy bars. And that was in their soup. But of course, in the soup, they're dead. <laughs> So I ate some of their soup. Mm -hmm. I mean, them worms are dead, you know, they're cooked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but the other ones, I don't know, you know, when I ate four candy bars and was on the fifth one, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure I got some worms that was alive then. <laughs> no doubt. No but doubt. somebody said, did it make you sick? I said, no, it didn't. <laughs> Fortunately, you were healthy. <laughs> <laughs> or nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were on the ship, and then where did you go? I mean, where did the ship take you? Up to, to the Philippines. Okay. And yeah. When you got there, what went, What happened? Well, what happened there was uh, I was with the colonel on the observation post, and uh, we were, our, our field artillery that we were in, was shooting the other direction at Japs in caves. But of course, I couldn't see them. That's too far away, you know. Because mm -hmm. these things will shoot miles. But the colonel could see them. Mm -hmm. He was calling the stuff, shots. And just him and I was on this OP. And then it wasn't too long, we received rifle fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's as close as I come to getting hit. It sounded like they. See if I was standing here, it sounded like they was going by like this. Mm-hmm. There's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell her about why you didn't get to What? Tell her why you didn't go to on, on to Japan. From the Philippines. From the Philippines? How long yeah. were you in the Philippines? You were supposed to be there. 30. 38 altogether months. 38, oh, you were there. That was your whole time in the service then, right? Yeah. Okay. But only 32 probably in the, you know, when the war was going on. Uh-huh. We had to wait a while to get a chip to take us back. They were to go in the next run into Okay. So tell me some of the things that went on while you were in the Philippines other than the candy. <laughs> well, I thought that was a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. true. Too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was what that one I was telling you, Lorraine, about the... Oh, yeah. This was before we went to the Philippines. Uh, we were at New Caledonia, and uh, a general came there to interview us, or review us, I should say, not interview us. Uh-huh. And... Uh, he stopped in front of some hillbilly there, and he said, what distance do you shoot Japs? And this hillbilly didn't know what to say, you know. 
Well, I wouldn't know what to say either. I guess any any distance you can see it works so. up. <laughs> and our captain come up there, and he told this hillbilly kid, he said, speak up when the general asks you a question. <laughs> and the general turned to him and he said, Captain, you just keep your damn mouth shut. <laughs> we all love that. <laughs> Oh, my. <laughs> uh, uh, you need to tell her what your outfit was planning to do if it would have been the if atomic bomb. Tell her about that. You were the next ones to go into the band. Oh. Well, I I don't know. I know we were supposed to go into yeah, Japan, but then the, I guess that atomic bomb stopped it. It's yeah. going to go. Mm -hmm. then, then tell her. Tell her about what come, came next. I can't hear you that good. You moved up the court when you was in bad bad age. Oh, what, what, while you were in the Philippines, tell me some of the things, some of your duties, some of the things that you did. Well, I have to think, and I ain't got much to think with. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. Right, right. Maybe Lorraine knows more than I do about it, I don't know. I know one thing, they had a snake over there, and I couldn't tell you what what the name of it was. Oh, really? In the Philippines. Uh-huh. But it, if it bit you, you you're done. Uh-huh. All it had to do was bite you once, you're dead. And you don't know what kind it was? I can't come up with the name. Huh. Of course, it wasn't a rattlesnake. That's no. U.S. Yeah, I don't know what it was anymore. I used to know what. Did they give you any training when when you were trained to be uh, in the service about you know how to look out for these snakes or? No. No. It's just no. something you learn after you get there. Huh? Good sign. <laughs> mm -hmm. In in our area where we were camped, and uh, a lot of times we laid the uh, we were on the ground. You know. Sure. And sometimes we didn't have a tent or anything. But uh, I'd say in that one area in the Philippines, they killed, I imagine, about four to six snakes every day. Now, I don't know wh whether they were the bad ones or what they were, but they killed them. Yeah. Did they have particular men that this is just what they did or just in the process well, this, of the just day? The guys, you know, just like me there. The, okay. No, I didn't kill any because I wasn't around any of them right then. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, give me an idea what what a normal day would be like for you, the things that you would do in a normal day. Well, that's hard to say. <laughs> it is. Well, tell, you, were, you were made corporal and then you were the battery agent. Tell her some of the things you were required, responsible to do. Well, let's bring it worked. That's all right. We'll look at your notes there. Huh? Look at your notes. Yeah. It, it wouldn't tell you. I don't think. Well, it would be tell how you went from one space to another. Did your rank change while you were in Panama? Where? Your rank. Philippines. Did, uh, I mean, Philippines. Philippines. Did your rank change while you were in the Philippines? No. It didn't change? Okay. Uh, I just a corporal. Okay. Did your duties change from time to time when you were over there? I mean, it's it's hard to say what what all the devil we did, but uh, mm -hmm. there wasn't a, there wasn't any Japs right around us right. for us to shoot. Mm -hmm. What did you do as bad? Except that one time I told you when I was with the colonel, they were shooting at us. Right. And we couldn't see them, so uh -huh. what the heck? Yeah. So there was no return fire? Not by us. Okay. But our artillery was shooting the other direction and supposedly shooting these Japs in the caves back here. Oh, okay. At, you know, at the other end. Mm-hmm. Well, before you got there, you, you were a guard, and then when you, when you got to um, the Philippines, what did you do each day? Were you in training each day? Were you were you holding the ground? Were you guarding? Just you know, what were your duties? I'd say we was uh, kind of guarding that area there. Okay. 
apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had been in the uh, field artillery battalion anyway. Uh, you know, I was uh, on a gun crew for a while, but then I got this other job. And what what job is that? This other job? Well, that's just being the corporal there. In the battery agent. Okay. Yeah, battery agent. And what does a battery agent do? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> battery agent, that's why I was up there with the colonel, if something happened to the wire, see he had a, a phone mm -hmm. and wires to the four artillery battalions there that we had, and uh, or four batteries I should say, not battalions, and if that wire got cut, then he, he couldn't tell them what to do next on their firing of targets out there. Mm -hmm. his, his phone wouldn't work then. So that's why I was there. He did the leg work. Okay, so uh, describe to us so what exactly what your leg work was. What do you do? So we well, know what a battery is. I didn't agent. have to go from the observation post to the, any of the firing batteries because the, the cable, the, the phone cables didn't get cut. See? Okay. But if they did, you then as the I battery had, agent, what would you do? So I, I'd go and, you know, walk down to where they were. It would be maybe uh, about 300 yards or so, you okay. know, mm -hmm. and uh, give them a verbal message. Oh, And there were see. supposed to be three other guys there because we had four firing batteries, and I was the only one there Okay. beside the colonel. <laughs> okay, so you, uh, you would... You would carry messages yeah. if the phones didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Whatever the colonel said to do. Okay. But you never had to do that. No, because the wire never got cut. Okay. So how would you spend your time? God, I'd stand around and getting shot at. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter if they go by you. That's far away as long as they don't hit you. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't fair because we couldn't see them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We had a, uh, one of our spotter planes was up there flying over where we supposed they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would shoot at him. He was going so slow that I thought they would shoot him, but they didn't. Hmm. They didn't have the artillery to do that, perhaps? Well, they had, the Japs had rifles at least. Okay. Because they were shooting rifle bullets past me. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell me something else that went on while you were there? No. Nope. Nothing else? I can't think of anything. <laughs> well, I think just their daily duties. They had, because he had to stay in the uh -huh. office part when he was made battery agent. Uh huh. You want to tell me how that came about, that you were a candidate for officer school? Yeah, I picked the wrong outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were trying to move you over there pretty fast. I, I was eligible because I passed a, you know, they have a test, mm -hmm. a written test and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I picked, uh, I was in the artillery, but I picked something else. Oh, the tank. Tank. Yeah. Tank destroyer. It was still in the artillery. Because I thought it'd be simpler to learn that. Because mm -hmm. the, the tank would just shoot straight ahead instead of having all this artillery stuff that I thought was more complicated. So mm -hmm. I chose that and then they told me, well, you can't go to tank destroyer school from here. And since you chose that, we don't want you. <laughs> That's what they said. Oh, really? Oh, sure. <laughs> he said the colonel said. They didn't mean, they didn't kick me out of the 
outfit. Uh -huh. I mean, they didn't want me for the officers of Canada school. Then. Right. Okay. So what? Okay. <laughs> um, lots of times, the the people we interview uh, in for World War II, they stay with the men that they went through basic training with. Did you? Did that didn't happen with you? As far as I know, it didn't. Okay. But and I'll tell you another thing: the food wasn't any too good. Oh, really? And the quantity. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose that was? Well, because I wasn't in the Navy or the Air Force. Mm -hmm. See, they, Air Force would fly their own stuff over there, and the Navy would bring their stuff over. Mm -hmm. But the Army was different. Okay. We didn't have real good chow over there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it was not not a bulk of it either, you know. It's mm -hmm. just a very light. Now you said thir you were there. Th you were in thirty six months total, and thirty eight, and you were at this location. How long? Well, I I don't know. That's a New Caledonia. That was island way down there. Right. Mm -hmm. the end. And then mm -hmm. you go past Guadalcanal all the way up to where this Philippines was. Okay, and you were at the Philippines how long? I don't think I could tell you. Okay, well you were there enough months that you would have bonded with these with these men that you were there with. Yeah. And you all were discharged at the same time, right? Yeah. Okay, so have you kept up with these men since? since yeah. yeah. Oh. We, I had one friend, uh, yeah. Earl Mason came there a few yeah. times our house. Yeah. The first few years of your home, one person did. Mm -hmm. We heard from another one. Yeah. But uh, then it didn't Okay, you don't go to any of the reunions or anything? Uh, I didn't hear it. You don't go to any of the reunions or anything? Yeah, I don't, th I don't think that uh, this has any Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how long after uh, the bombing of Japan did you have to stay in this location? We had to stay, I think, probably four months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because now, they went, they went by how much combat you was in mm -hmm. and how long you'd been overseas. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, you had the ones that, like you know, our outfit, didn't uh, didn't have enough points, as they call them, to go home right away. Okay. Well, with the war ending the way it did, mm -hmm. what? Were your duties over there? Was it kind of a cleanup time where you were cleaning up and getting ready to close down the base, or just what did you do? Well, they didn't really have a base because they just pyramid tents and stuff like that. You mm -hmm. know, not not really like a base nor a fort or anything like that. Okay. Well, didn't they think he was going to stay there. Okay. So what what did you do for that many months? Stand around. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> War was over. <laughs> I uh, tell you one thing I did uh, when I was on guard duty at at, uh, at one place I was telling you about New Caledonia. Mm -hmm. It was up on stilts. Mm -hmm. I stole some car carbine ammunition, mm -hmm. and then when we got to the Philippines, mm -hmm. I was one of the few guys that had any ammo. Oh. Can you believe that? Interesting. That's how stupid that army is. Yeah. That, that's a combat yeah. zone, that whole damn Philippines. Uh -huh. So you I had ammo, a lot of guys didn't. I, they had guns? Eventually they'd give them some. Oh, okay. Had guns and no ammo? Yeah. Hmm. I, I know at least once or twice we went out on the uh, kind of a road patrol. Mm -hmm. And I was, I know that I had ammo. Oh, okay. For my carbine. Uh -huh. But a lot of these guys had carbines slung over their shoulder, but they didn't have any ammo. So what are they going to shoot? For heaven's sake. <laughs> the army's kind of stupid in some ways. <laughs> so, but anyway. Um, many of the men that we've interviewed uh, after they got out of the service, because the, of the time in our history that you served, uh, they benefited from having been in the service with their education. Did, when you got out of the service, how, how do you feel like your, uh, the service time benefited you? 
Uh, I don't know whether I can answer that or not. Okay. I was glad I went. I volunteered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, I'd have got drafted anyway. I got draft notice down at Fort Sills. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I sent it back to them and said, go to hell. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Which was kind of stupid because then the next war come along, I thought, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you remember that, buddy? Yeah, I do. The next war? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think of what it was. Well, the Korean. So you, you don't feel like you benefited in any way from your okay. time and service? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I was proud to go. Yeah. That's all I can say, if that's a benefit. Well, and when I mean benefit, a lot of the gentlemen we've talked to, the business that they went in and that, they felt as though that the country served them well even after they were, you know, not in the service anymore through their education or their oh, yeah. government loans to start a business or... No, I didn't. We started one, but he didn't get a loan. We didn't uh, use no government loans. Okay. So you, you just kind of shut the door when you went you left. I did what? Shut, you just kind of shut the door when you left. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He was proud of being uh, out there. I, when the next war came along, I thought they'd probably get me on in. But they didn't? Uh -uh. Oh. I think that was Korea. Okay. okay. Because of my age. Mm -hmm. See, they was drafting guys up to 26 years old. Right. I was probably 22 when mm -hmm. I was went home. Mm -hmm. From World War Two. Yeah. No, you were twenty. Right. We had uh, three kids. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thank you. Well. Can you think of anything else you want to share before we close? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think we did re re guessed it. <laughs> no, we've discussed about everything. Okay. Very good. Well, I think it's your grandma. Yeah, I think so. Let's think it's something else you want to say. Okay. Uh, you've done quite a few now, you told me the other day. Yes, we have.